So this is example number two on Kelvin's circulation theorem. In this particular example, we're going to take a cylinder fluid, the radius R max, um, and this radius, this cylinder is rotating about its, uh, about its axis as a rigid body motion. Okay, and it has an angular velocity omega. Before we start the problem, we need to know what the velocity is. So if I look from the top, okay, and I have a coordinates of d theta, so then you know your ds is going to get is given by this is r times d theta. This is using your uh, the definition of an arc, and the velocity it, the velocity of your fluid that's actually rotating like this is w times r. That's your tangential velocity uh, times e theta. Okay, so you don't have a radial component because we're assuming that it's only rotating about this axis, not creating, we're ignoring the force that's going in the radial direction. Okay, so from here, uh, before you even start the problem, because we know we're going to need this information uh, later, if I take the dot product of this, this gives me omega r squared times d theta. So I'm going to need this, and I'm just going to keep that. Uh, available. Okay, so now let's move on. Uh, the first question is we want to calculate the vorti vorticity. Okay, now if I want to calculate the vorticity in my problem, if you go back to your previous uh, couple of lectures back, we found that the vorticity was equal to the gradient times the velocity vector and the same thing as twice the rotation. Okay, so uh, the vorticity in the cylindrical coordinates is given as follows. Um, this is the uh, in your coordinate system. So we can just go ahead and realize that in this problem, I only have u theta available, right? Everything else is zero. So immediately from this expression, uh, we have uh, we don't have z, we don't have z, we don't have r. We don't have R. We only have these terms available, okay? And this is only a function of R. So u theta is equal to omega R, omega R. So therefore, this is not a function of Z. This will go away. This is only a function of R. So you end up with... Um, R times partial of R omega R squared respect to R. And 1 over R, 1 over R cancels out. So this goes away as well. And the only thing that you're really left is the derivative of this. And that would give you 2 times R omega. Okay? So this is the... This will be your omega. So then this is equal to uh, 2 times r omega. Um, there's an r there that doesn't go. So this doesn't go there. Uh, so you really have r squared times this. And they have this 1 over r there. So when you divide this, this is divided by r. So this gives you, um, let me actually move all this. Uh, so this is going to give you 2 times omega. So you can see that your expression actually gives you 2 times omega. Uh, and in the i direction, that kind of makes sense, okay? And you can see this has to be consistent because we kind of know that this has to be omega i because of the problem itself. So this is just a proof on how to do this, but you didn't have to go through all, all this hassle to actually show this. Okay, so we found this. The next question is find the circulation of a particle of a radius r from the axis let's say 0 and r max, using definition of circulation. So the definition of circulation states the following. It says that gamma 
is going to equal to the enclosed integral, okay, over v dot ds, and that's going to give you the enclosed area zero to pi of omega r squared d theta, that gives you two times pi r squared. Okay, so by given this problem, so now what we can see is that you're, you have several cases. When um, r is equal to zero, uh, in that particular case, so you're talking the center, your circulation is actually zero. When r is bigger than, uh, your r is bigger than zero, uh, but less than r max, your circulation is given by 2 pi omega r squared. But when your r is equal to r max, that would give you the maximum possible circulation in your problem, and that gives you 2 pi omega r max squared, okay? So not only we can calculate it this way, but we can also calculate circulation using the Stokes theorem. So let's see what the Stokes theorem tells me, okay? So you're supposed to get exactly the same answer, and this just uh, helps you better understand these concepts as well, ds. So this is nothing else than omega, okay, the vector omega. We show that this is equal to i. I'm sorry, this is k. Um, I might have... This is actually k, this is k, so this is k. Uh, you may want to fix this, this is k, this is omega k. Remember, you go to the problem, this is z direction, so this is going in the k direction. Um, so this is k, uh, so when I do this, now this is and my vector, but the normal vector is k as well. So I'm really taking the double integral to surface of 2 times omega k uh, dot k times ds. Uh, and that would give me equal to omega 2 pi. And then ds would be r dr d theta. Okay, if you do this integral, you can go the integral of 0 to pi. And you could go from 0 to r, if you would. 2 pi r dr d theta. And if you do the whole integration, that gives you omega is equal to, uh, uh, gamma is equal to 2 pi r squared. That gives you exactly the same answer that we got previously. Okay. And so from here, again, we can find that uh, at r equal to 0, uh, this is 0. And when r is equal to r max, this is equal to gamma max is equal to 2 pi omega r max squared. OK, so. The last question is if it actually obeys the circulation law, Kelvin circulation law. Circulation law states that uh, the, the total time derivative of gamma that has to equal to zero. So let's go and apply circulation law and see if it applies, if it satisfies. So I can actually use gamma is equal to t plus v dot the gradient of this, okay? And lambda times gradients of omega, uh, uh, of the circulation will give you gradient is equal to partial uh, er, partial of r, plus uh, e phi, e theta, 1 over r, partial of theta, plus partial of uh, 
e at e z partial of z. So if I put gamma there, then gamma goes here, and gamma goes here, and gamma goes here. And we found from our problem that gamma was equal to, so gamma was equal to 2 pi omega r squared, that's the circulation. So this term right here becomes 4 pi omega r. Um, this term is not a function of theta, so this is 0. And it's not a function of z, so this is 0. You only end up with this term. Okay? And uh, then your velocity vector, so this gradient is equal to 4 pi omega r e r. And your velocity vector, if you remember from the beginning of the problem, was omega r e theta. And obviously, when you take this dot product, this will actually give you equal to 0. Okay, So from here, you can show that your time, total time, is actually equal to 0. And this shows the proof. Uh, you can also go the long way, and you can show that the integration as well gives you zero. But it's not necessary because this already says that E obeys Kelvin's law. Okay. So you have to always make sure that your circulation is not changing with time for an incompressible flow. Um, and Kelvin's law is a check. You're satisfied.